hello guys how are you how are you doing how is you and your family going how is your personal life going i hope you're well i hope you're keeping safe hope you're wearing your mask and sanitizing and if you can afford it i hope you're staying at home it is desiree here from the premiere series and if you remember our last lecture, we worked with the two of our favorite tools. And I was introducing the lecture because I wanted you guys to get into the mind of it. And we're using Vakenya as the word, as the piggy of that part. As the guinea pig, sorry. As the guinea pig of that side of that last business. And there were so many examples we tackled. There were so many things we talked about in the final lectures. And today, I promise you that I'm going to do the silent business. And before I start even the lecture about the salon business and how we can think about it in, in, in a different way, let us just circle back and talk about um, uh, my history with the salon business. Uh, I grew up in the salon business 100% of my life. We were, we, I started working since I don't know when. And for the last, for almost 23 years of my life, I was hands on in the industry. Not 100% of course, I was a student and all these things, there was always in between. But every time we had a holiday or whatever, we were always in the salon. And I got to learn so much from the industry that I have intimate knowledge. So, this industry is close to my heart and I see, I, I saw the challenges. Some of them, we even went through it ourselves as a family because when some family business goes through challenges, it also just spills over to your own personal business. And there are mistakes that were made there were challenges that came up, there were problems that were solved, and there was a brand that was built. And uh, within a period of like two decades, I saw my parents work really, really hard to give Elgarita a brand. And they have their award, their accolades. I can never go without, without recognizing how much work they did for the industry. And anyone who right now is getting rid of the industry, they know that there are people who sacrificed before. That's the same thing we are trying to do with what the unfortunate industry in Nigeria, in what in Vakenya. And as usual, of course, with our sponsor, Vakenya, obviously, you, you should shop on our website. And I'm going to ask Nigeria and the business and the rest of the partners to give us, in the entrepreneurs, guys, what? Our code, right? So when you shop on our website, you get to what? Free. <laughs> some, some, you get to save some money with my leg. I started this Kyondo, and I think this setup is cute. And we are upgrading, we even have a sound industry, so I hope this lecture is as it feels the last one. And let's get started. We're gonna be using our favorite tools as usual business model, Canva, the lean Canva, and the social analysis. Those are the two tools we need to just think about our business. Whether you're already running your own salon business, whether you're thinking of upgrading your salon business, whether you're thinking of starting your own salon business, this is our time. You and me are gonna walk this journey. The time these lectures end, no, of course, today I can't finish everything today. But by the time we finish these lectures, you're gonna know how to think different, and what are the challenges in the industry, and what are the opportunities for you, and what are the strengths and weaknesses of the industry. And again, you're gonna, you're gonna I'm gonna always ask you to do what your own social analysis before we proceed here. There are some facts about the industry you already know, and some facts you don't know. And I want to tell you as a, as, as a bit entrepreneur fan, I want you to know this as a fact. Where there are challenges, there is money to be made. Remember that. So every time we talk about challenges, just know it's an opportunity for you to think what different, for you to think better, for you to imagine better. And full disclosure, I hate when my hair is dry. Even I know it's, a, it's ironical because currently I'm this, the state of the blood dried hair. But I long for a time whereby black hair doesn't have to be blood dried. I know there's some solution already out there for a few people already using it, but it's not, it's not yet mainstream yet. But I dream of the world whereby we don't have to fry black hair anymore. Our hair is manageable, we were lied to. Even though I was part of the people who I used to believe that black hair has to be fried if you're chemical or if you're nini, those are just my personal biases. Let's get to the lecture, shall we? And I hope you learned something. Stay tuned. Get your pen out, get your paper out. It is a salon business series with entrepreneur. And as usually in business entrepreneur, we're going to always start with the most important person, your biggest employer. And your employer in the industry is what? The customer. <laughs> and in business entrepreneur, we believe the customer is mostly right, or is always right, or maybe not, but this one is your employer. Whether you work in the industry as an employee, or you're the boss, or you're the founder, or you're anything, we all need to know, we show up every day at work because of who? The customer. 
This one is the biggest employer in capitalism. So let's get right to it. So usually, remember how you're doing your customer segments? If you didn't know, remember that? This is just gonna be a run through. This lecture, I am just gonna try to make it into maximum three lectures. So, who is your customer? And I'm gonna talk about several businesses that I know of and see how that works. So, what are the segments of customers? There's a the first customer, babies. Children. That's an interesting customer. Children, they usually in most schools are allowed to keep their hair. Excuse me, we even have children who are doing dreadlocks. So, we have the children who are doing dreadlocks. We have children who only do the lines if they're girls. And then we have the children as well on your level. What do you call it? The barber part. Uh, and then we have the ch kids who are getting what? Styled. And then I'm just talking about their what day, day, day to day look. Not when they are having events, not when they are being told to do this and that, not when something is happening in their life, because even ch children, as adults, they have moments where they don't have to play by the rules. So, our first customer segment is children, and let's give them an age in between entrepreneur. Let's say, your, the first thing my client comes to you, she's five years old, and he is five years old. So, a five to ten year old child. Right? That's our first customer. Our second customer, we say uh, they are teenagers. So teens have crazy hair. My have a little sister used to be a teenager like just a little a teenager like a few months ago. But when she was a teenager, she used to have crazy hair. So let's talk preteen children. Preteen are the ch kids between the age of, let's say, the same one I'm choosing to do a segment with age. You can do a segment with anything. You can start with age and you can do another one with. You can do your segments with income, you can do our segments with age, you can do our segments with uh, preferences, but depending on where you are setting up, you can do our segments with location. There's so many, many ways of doing what, of dealing with your segments. But now, today, for, for the purpose of this lecture, I, I want to do for someone who is trying to build a business for everyone, the bigger population. So, we have 15 children, and then we have number three, we have the teenagers. And then we have uh, number four, we have young adults. Uh, young adults usually falls for people who are usually in campus and in the beginning of campus. And then we have adults. And in adults, you can decide to put them as millennials. And then the end generation is what? Gen, well, Gen Z, we have millennials, Gen Z, uh, baby boomers, people in their 40s. Baby boomers, or are they older? I'm not so sure about when the boomers were born. Baby boomers, whatever. But when you even the salmon business, people don't tell you this, the needs of anyone in all these parts changes. And let's say your business wants to take care of. So when you think about your business, are you thinking of making it a spa? Or you think of making it a small uh, hair salon? Or you think of making it a nail bar? Or you think of making it whatever you imagine is possible? It's going to be possible. But you have to know which customer you're targeting. Because it is going to be useless if you open uh, what do you call you? Open a massage parlor and you're trying to target what? Children. It's a waste of our time. Okay. Or you or you open a parlor and you're trying to target pigeon and teens. But you open a, a, a massage parlor and you're thinking about a dance. Personally, at my age, I'm willing to do a massage. I didn't talk, I never thought I would do a massage in my life, but the older I get, the worse my bones are. So at the end of the day, in all these people that you're talking about here as your customers, you need to know them intimately. What makes them tick? And then we can work towards like that. Like seriously, who are we serving as a business? Who are we serving is very, very important. Even if we come and decide to do a segment using using what? Income. You can decide if it's a family. If you're thinking about opening a family salon, family salon it means it has to have a barber, it has to have a spa, it has to, it has to have a hair section, hair and beauty salon, hair and beauty section, it has to have uh, massage, it has to have the scrubbers, all these things. You have to think about the family. And when you remember the family, you remember you have to open it in a bigger space, complete with the playground. So, you want to, just, I'm just, just giving you a picture of when you're, if you're thinking of, if your customers are gonna be family, we can even group our segments. And remember, here, entrepreneur, you have the freedom to decide how you get, you, you have, your starting point of getting to know your what? Your customer. If you want to work with age, that is fine. There is nothing right or left about here, but you need to work with something that we know. It felt the demography. Even the government says to know us, even if you're trying to open a female salon, only women are allowed in this space, or only men are allowed in this space, 
or a neutral salon, a unisex one, whatever. Even if you decide you're gonna do your your segment with gender, it still ends up doing what fulfilling what you think about in your business model here. So whatever. But let us work with what I think is 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 faster to to work on through. Let's work with what doing our segments in this. And remember the point for writing the customer segment. I want you to write so many segments until you feel your hand hurts. I recommend five to ten, or even more if you can get more than more than ten segments. It's good for you because at this time we're writing this model. Don't box yourself. At this stage, you're trying to get so we are trying to see the potential of the people who already exist in the market that we can serve. And remember, we are looking at every segment. What do you look at at this point? Are they underserved? So anytime you come in, let's say children, you say children are either overserved or underserved. You can have such a score. You can there are so many scores of thinking about what your customer segments are they underserved or they overserved. Is there an opportunity? Can you create a market or is there a market already? Depending on what you're thinking about at this stage, my point is, when you're reading your segments, do not box yourself. I want to, for example, you get a deep dive into, let me, I just, I'm just going to use myself as usual. I am a young adult with a millennial living in Nairobi, and I hate, hate getting my hair done. I don't like the twist, I don't like the braiding, I don't like all these things. I even don't like when my hair is being a connection or channel. I don't like that. If it's up to me, I'll just wash my hair and never move. Literally, but apparently it does not look good for someone who works in the you know, fashion industry. It's a whole thing. So, my but if you give me a better solution in the market, I think I might jump into it. But then again, is it within my budget? What are the kind of the hair products I can afford at this point? If you're talking about the hair products part, I'm thinking about, I see that this entire place on natural hair. But personally, I know I can't manage it because of two reasons. I'm lazy, I'm extremely lazy when it comes to hair, eh? And I'm trying to heal from the trauma of frying my hair for years. And B, I, I, I don't even remember to remove my makeup. So, how, what makes you think I'm gonna be? I'm gonna remember to do my hair. But, if I had um, someone who just passes by my house once or twice a week to fix my hair, I would love that. Someone comes with their products and they do the thing for me and give me a figure. I'm just giving an example of what I would, I'm looking for. So this thing is say for someone who is lazy, doesn't have all these things going for them, and they want to keep their natural hair. What are the prices that she needs to pay and can she afford it? And, he, and then, remember like this, are they profitable? Whether they are underserved or overserved, are they looking at you about you look at what? Are they profitable? Is it profitable serving Daisy who wants someone to be passing by a house twice a week to fix her natural hair? So you come with a sink, you do my hair, you wash it, you apply it to our products, you set it, and then you come back again after another three days or, or thereabout. And, and, and when you are, what I get me? Is it easier for you, cheaper for you, to make a subscription based business over making it a what? A cash business. Because if I subscribe, if I, if I subscribe to it, um, it's gonna. Give you capital to be able to move around and you can increase your pool easily. And remember, when you think about a business model, remember the point is to know the customer and figure out how to serve them well. I have taught my domain of Michelle Martin. It doesn't matter who you want to serve. Remember, the point is to serve them very well. That is your main work. That is literally your only job. That is really why you exist as a business. So remember that. And to serve me well, you need to get to know me very well. So, maybe let's take a deep dive into, let's say, another person. Let's take a deep dive into income. You say, uh, let's, okay, we can do an entire profile of a child. Is that fair? We already call them a child, so let's give this child a name. Let's call them, hey, children usually have names like what? Azuri, Azua. Let's call them Azua. I don't know if Azua is a but I hear names are crazy. So, we are looking at Azua, and for Azua, we need to know this child very well. So, Azua is a newly ch new child in the, in the hair business, let's say, I don't know what, what she is not having here, let's say she's three years old. Okay, let's start with five years old, I think I can walk with a five years old, they can speak for themselves. So, Azua is five years old, and she lives with her family, let's say she lives with her family in Nairobi, Let's say Nairobi, where? Around the airport, right? Embakasi. She lives in Embakasi. Her mother, so mother, her parents, 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 they are both. Mother is a teacher. And the father owns his own business. 
so they pretty really have a pretty comfortable life in Nairobi. So that is what their parents have. What is happening as well? Has this been a private school? Not in public schools, the crazy ones, because their parents are very young at this stage, and she's the first child. So she's in a private school, and the private school has allowed them the freedom to do with their hair whatever they want because we are reclaiming our hair. So it was totally put on as well. It's gonna have has to be had, and this is the first time going to school. So it's gonna be whatever. I, I want. She wants what her mother prefers or her father prefers, depending on who is making the decision in her life. But then the day, because she's in a private school, her hairstyle doesn't matter. Okay, and what is, so because Azua is a dependent in this story, she needs to be done what she needs to be dealt with proper. It is not her money at this stage playing, it is her parents' money. So, how much is her budget per, let's say, town? Hi, fuck. Let's speak Hi guys, so Azua is always on a budget, but now we've already profiled how we know who her parents are, what business they do, where they live, what's her age, and she's in private school. And right now you mean she has more freedom. So private school means she has freedom, and that improves your designs. What does that mean? Uh, Azua can easily afford spa treatments because she'll be going to, with her mom to do what? To do mommy time? Mommy time and bond, girls time. Bonding with her mom easily because that's how parents bond these days. Azua will also be open to things like, let me just rub this. Our Azua will also be open easily, 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 easily. She'll also be open to what now? The good hair. And she can easily do manipedis. That is not a spa statement and just like that. Because she's a child, she's not going to be exposed to a lot of chemicals because parents believe chemicals are bad for their children. But she's going to be dancing in a little bit of money pedic here. And she, she comes with her mother. So Azua, as a customer segment, provides for an opportunity to serve who? Her mom. Okay, and let's say as all sisters. If she doesn't, that's okay. But now she has the opportunity to serve her mom and she has a brother. Mom, mom is always going to be bringing Azua to the, to the same spa. So, you know, it means what you're trying to design here is a family friendly what? If you target children, it has to be family friendly. Azuma should even be brought here by either the, 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 the nanny, she may be brought there with the brother, the father, anyone can bring Azuma to the salon. But at the end of the day, she needs a place to play and she needs to be able to feel comfortable. So, when you're working on designing this business, you know what's going to be things like comfort. So, this is our Azua. The next stage, of course, as smoothly as I finish the customer segment, is how I'm going to connect to the problem. What is Azua trying to achieve as a client? What are her pain points? What are her pain points? And what is she trying to achieve at this stage of her life? So the mother is trying to give her her best life. So she's going to be giving, she's going to be looking for something that is affordable and yet high quality. So the problem is the thing, the problem about most spas is cleanliness. You can walk into a spa and never go back because you felt like your skin was crawling the entire time you were there. Literally. And I want to say, uh, because so, her mother is going to be looking for uh, some ambience. A place whereby she can kick back, relax, and even her daughter can relax at the end of the day and they can have a good time, they're going to have lunch. So if you can offer things like food for the, in that spa, if you can offer things like, uh, let's say, snacks, you can offer snacks and it has to be kids friendly snacks with apparel. Action! 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 Okay. Now this is Azua. We already have her profile. We already know everything about her at this stage. We know Azua has a mother, they live together, the mother is a father, the, the, mother, the mother and father have good jobs and they can afford some money for spas at least once a month. So Mamuzo is going to be bringing you her money every month. But now, what are the problems or what are the problems that Azua has as a client? Let's say she is um she has sensitive skin. Sensitive skin. And number two, let's say the problem she has sensitive scalp. And she likes crying. She likes crying and it annoys her mother a lot when she's in the salon. Another problem, let's say she has, those are the physical problems. Another problem probably is location. 
Location in what sense? Her mother does not like traveling with children across town. But she's just looking for something around the neighborhood. Or they love traveling. But either way, every family, when kids are involved, faces some challenges, especially when it comes to things like buying clothes, uh, getting uh, to the spa, fixing their hair. All these things are problems that present themselves. Uh, but let's say, uh, as in our story, location is an issue because her mother is interesting and is a millennial and she loves hanging out with her daughter. So she do want to go to a nice place. There's a zoo who wanted to go for next place. They don't mind a two hours drive, an hour, an hour drive, or 30 minutes to drive to go to their what? To their location. So you can set up your place outskirts to provide them. But if it's an outskirts of sound, you have to promise them what? Unlimited comfort. We're gonna get to the solution later. But first, let's say another challenge for them is location, or let's call it, uh, what do you call it? Commute. Commute. Uh, her school is not very very strict, so she has she's looking for a a well a, 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 a hairdresser or a spa treat, really a pedicurist or a manicurist who knows what they're doing. So let's say they have high standards, or let's say they have no standards. They're just looking for a nice place to be doing their hair. That's another problem. What other problem that could be about her? Let's say another problem that Azua has is she likes to sleep when she's getting her hair done. She falls asleep easily, so she takes the time when they're doing her hair as what? Nappy time. Or not. Or not. Or also another problem that it comes to having a child to take the salon is she's very playful. Playful. Okay. Or not playful. Or oh, see that as or not. All these things now I'm getting the kind the kind of problems that Azua could have as a client. That she needs to be what? To be solved. Some of them are painkillers. Some of them some of them are actually actual pain. Like the sensitive skin, the sensitive scalp part. This is actually pain it means they have to be very specific products. In the beginning she can start experimenting with products or not. It doesn't matter because it's a salon business. But let's say Azua, this, these are the things I see problems. Location, all these things. These are the things she's trying to solve. This, this, these are the pain points she's trying to solve. And for you as a business, you already know where she comes from. Let's say. Go. Action. Action. So, guys, where we were when problems, and you are thinking about the customer problems, remember we had three parts of problems. We have their pain, we have the pain. The gains, don't forget, and there's really three. I forgot the third one. I have to check my notes later on. When it comes to the problem, is if, if, you, you see the same way we listed a lot of segments? I want you to do the same same thing with what? With your problems. I want you to list as many, many, as many problems as possible. For example, the location part is the part of convenience. Are they looking for convenience or not convenience? Are they looking for convenience as a family? Or they don't mind, are they looking for convenience? Is this, is, is this a, pro a problem of convenience? Is this a problem of comfort? Is this a problem of sanitization? Sorry, sorry uh, clean place. That's what I meant by always. Oh, oh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, is this a, is this a problem of uh, cleanliness? Is the, is the family obsessed with clean spaces? Is the family obsessed with comfort? Or is this a problem of brand? Are they looking to look for the biggest, most amazing brand? Is this a problem of service? Are they looking for great service or ambience or all of the three? All this will determine how to serve as your best. You need to list every possible need, pain, every possible need, every possible pain, everything possible about them. That you imagine a girl of that family and that stature is gonna need. List all those problems. Our uh, problems we mean they sometimes we their, their needs, sometimes their wants, sometimes their what? Pain. Needs or wants or pain. What is happening? And remember what you said. Needs is what I was listing here. These are the needs of Azua. When you talk about pain, also sometimes it could be an industry pain, sometimes it could be what? An individual pain. It doesn't matter. I want you to list everything. Remember you're doing this model. 
This is not my day. At all. This is your problems. I need to list industry problems, customer problems. They are both relevant to this story for you to make a good decision. Do you remember that? So right now, you would see. And because the, and remember in everything we do, we're gonna do we take it through the source analysis. But this one may complicate this this lecture. Simply put, find out what they need, what they want, what they dream about, and what you need to know everything about your clients and the industry plans before you can make a single decision whether to pursue this one business or not. Okay, and if you're in the industry. Are there more services you need to put in place for you to make more money? Are there things you need to put in place for this to be possible? What are your clients asking you? What are your clients not asking you? What have you installed that they don't like? And what do you need to install that they've already been telling you to install? Like for example, you get, you get someone saying, I, like, I, just, I don't like gel. I don't like gel, I just want the regular polish. And you're a nail bar that doesn't store work. Store, store what? Nail polish. They, they don't store nail polish. So, if you're in business, listen to your clients' needs and wants and start serving them to the best of your abilities. You can never serve everyone. Remember also that. And you cannot meet all your clients' needs because sometimes they're not profitable. And it's okay for you to stop offering a certain service because it's not possible. And you to introduce the service because it's what? It's profitable. But remember the student does this here. But when you're doing this, remember business canva is just a thing too. So when you're doing this, think about every problem, every possible problem. Some imagined. First, start with Google's. Go where? Go where? Ask people. Ask yourself. Like I'm telling you guys at the beginning how I don't like my hair getting fried. I don't know how much of in the market. Ask yourself. If I had more space, I would have launched a business that does not use what? I would have launched a whole hair business. And I hope, and I, I and because I already have, and please hear this. Whatever, no one is a better experiment for your business than yourself. Because in the beginning you're starting small, we really call really them expensive hobbies. In the beginning you're starting them small before they become a real business. So you can even start experimenting with your own self and ask yourself, if I was in this industry, what is currently in the market, you've been going to the salon all your life, what is happening in all those salons that you hate or you like? What do you need? Okay. You can tell yourself the main experiment or you can even ask questions. What are your girlfriends saying? What are your friends saying? What are the people you know saying? What are they? Now before you get to strangers, we need to close everything about the salon that you think and solve. And do you need to invent something? <laughs> Maybe after doing this is the way you thought you were going to do a salon and then you ended up doing what? Inventing something for the salon industry. Who would have thought that? So, be open mind when you're listening to the problems. List the industrial problems, list the customer problems, as many as possible. Remember when you did this customer segment, all those segments, you should have a whole book. This is going to be around minimum, if you're doing it full-time, one month's worth of work. Full-time. And I'm not lying to you, this is going to be the most thing you've done for you and your business. And you, after you're done, you can print it and put it there and say, this is our business model. Because a business model is a roadmap of your business, both in the internally to your customers and to the to the future. Even investors would love to see a business model, and this is how business models are formed. Don't just go in blindly. And we're going to tackle solution next. We're going to keep going with as well the same. I'm working with a child in the service industry and her family to the end. So the next lecture is going to be about solution, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting me. And as I've been talking to Jerry every time we've been posing this thing, and she's telling us that we might get our own bit entrepreneur what? Bit entrepreneur, entrepreneur code. And because we're talking about children, back to school available in Vakenya by Ali. It's from 1400 to 1800. Well designed for our Azua. Very light, comfortable leather, and all these things from Vakenya. Let's go to our website, look at back to school, and get your Azua a pair of shoes. It's available in all sizes for all children. We even have four designs of back to school. Please order Ali. And thank you for tuning in. Of course, it's always sponsored by Vakenya. You can need to give Vakenya a shout out. They're allowing me to shoot. Today, I spent around three hours shooting this. 
So guys, support me through. I'm gonna leave here my number. I'm gonna leave the link to Back in the Boy Crew School Edition. I'm gonna hope we keep continuing the conversation. The next video, of course, is gonna be about solution. We're gonna. I'm gonna be doing this double double solo in the bio. I wish I could do solution right now, but I don't have time. I have to go back. To, I have a meeting in a few. But that is what's up. Thank you guys. We should have a series. Be really, really here and then say bye. Bye guys. <laughs> yeah, this behind the camera. Thank you guys. And if you love our new setting, it's because someone sent your pesa and I want to start merchandising this. Would you buy a business of your what? Mug. Because man, we are a family. Let me know if you would buy this mug. And if you would, I'm gonna start printing them. Thank you very much and stay because we are gonna figure this out. Remember the last night is the best lecture conversations. And so you know, I have three amazing guests lined up for the Grey Couch, but we have to do the lectures first. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your week.